recognized. Mr. Speaker, I want to thank my uh, colleague, the Majority Leader, Eric Cantor, Congresswoman Tara Sewell, and Martha Robin in offering this resolution today. And I, uh, Mr. Speaker, I yield myself as much time I may consume. I'm so pleased that this resolution will preserve the oral history of current and former members of Congress who participated in the Civil Rights Movement. And it will also preserve the experiences of members who have come on the faith and politics civil rights pilgrimage to Alabama. Together we have retraced the steps that were walked so many years ago and spend time with some of the people who shaped the Civil Rights Movement. Some of the members who have gone on this pilgrimage were not even born during the Civil Rights Movement, and they come to learn about our nation's history. Many members have come away changed by this experience forever. This resolution will help us preserve a powerful and transformative period in American history without the brave and courageous souls who shed blood, sweat, and tears in Alabama and throughout the South, this would be a very different nation today. It is very important that members of Congress understand and acknowledge the debt we owe to ordinary people with extraordinary vision, who, as Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. once said, injected new meaning into the very vein of our democracy. Mr. Speaker, on March 7, 1965, 600 peaceful nonviolent protesters attempted to march from Selma, Alabama to the state capitol in Montgomery to dramatize to the world that people of color wanted to register to vote. We left Brown Chapel AME Church that morning on a sacred mission, prepared to defy the dictates of man to demonstrate the truth of a higher law. Ordinary citizen with extraordinary vision walked shoulder to shoulder, two by two, in a silent, peaceful protest against injustice in the American South. We were met at the foot of the Edmund Pettus Bridge by a sea of blue, Alabama state troopers. Some was mounted on horseback, but all of them was armed with guns, tear gas, and billet clubs. And beyond them were deputized citizens who was waiting any weapons they could find. Then we heard, I am Major John Cloud. This is an unlawful march. You cannot continue. You have three minutes to go home or return to your church. We were preparing to kneel and pray when the Major said, troopers advance. And the troopers came toward us, beating us and spraying tear gas. That brutal confrontation became known as Bloody Sunday. It produced a sense of righteous indignation in the country and around the world that led this Congress to pass the Voting Rights Act of 1965. Eight days after Bloody Sunday, President Lyndon Johnson addressed a joint session of the Congress and made what I believe is the greatest statement any president has ever made on the importance of voting rights in America. He began by saying, I speak tonight for the dignity of man and for the destiny of democracy. He said, at time, history, and fate meet at a single time and a single place to shape a turning point in man's unending search for freedom. So it was at Lexington and in Concord. So it was a century ago at Appomattox. So it was last week in Selma, Alabama. And during that speech, President Johnson condemned the violence in Selma and call on the Congress to invite the Voting Rights Act. He closed his speech by echoing the words of the Civil Rights Movement, saying over and over, and we shall overcome, and we shall overcome. Congress did pass the Voting Rights Act, and on August 6, 1965, it was signed into law. This weekend, starting tomorrow, is the 12th Congressional Pilgrimage to Civil Rights Sites in Birmingham, Montgomery, and Selma with the Faith and Politics Institute. We will remember the distance we have come and the progress we've made. We will end our, together, end our time together in Selma 
by crossing the Edmund Pettus Bridge. During this trip, we see ourselves not as Democrats or Republicans or adversaries, but we see ourselves as Americans on a journey to discover our history. We all come away from this pilgrimage with a deeper appreciation of our democracy and the power of people to make a difference in our society. I'm so pleased that this story will be told. Mr. Speaker, I reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman from Georgia reserves. The gentleman from California is recognized. Mr. Speaker, it's my pleasure to yield two minutes to the gentleman from...